So you know how you see those really cool neon signs, like wherever you go? All over, on Instagram, at weddings, super cool bars, awesome companies, boom. I want one in my living room right now, and I am going to get it at myneonstore.com because they're offering our listeners a huge discount. Which means they'll probably give it to you too, Michelle. I think they should give it to me. So they have a collection of some that are already created, or you get your own custom neon sign like your last name or I love Michelle and Christy or whatever your you want to put hashtag. on it. Oh yeah, hashtag. There's free quotes and mock-ups. They have a bulletproof warranty and it's delivered to your door in as quick as seven days from the time you pay for it. Plus, they're the only brand that offers a deadline guarantee. So head over to the website right now, myneonstore.com. At checkout, you're going to enter big wedding, all one word, big wedding, for 20% off, which can literally be like $400 off and is a massive promo discount uh, that we're offering. We're happy to offer our listeners through myneonstore.com. Thank you, My Neon Store. The Big Wedding Planning Podcast. Just two wedding planners tearing it up. Listen, learn, plan that way. In planning a wedding, we want you to learn something valuable and be entertained. At the same time, my name is Michelle Martinez. And I'm Christy Matthews. Hello. Thank you. Welcome. Happy to have you. Come on in. Have a seat. Oh, yes. Come in here. Here's a glass of wine. Oh, yes. And a glass of champagne. Cheers. Chin, chin. Chin chin. It's a Monday school <laughs> night as we're uh, recording this, everyone, just so you know. Mm-hmm. So we're like continuing the weekend, but also preparing ourselves for the week. Right. It's well, that weird in between Monday evening, like, okay. I feel like Mondays just need to be celebrated because listen, I'm not going to, I, I, a lot of people are like, oh, it's Monday. No. I just, you can't fight it. It, it you, comes you just embrace it and it goes and it comes again and it goes again. And if you thought of it as a Friday, just, just pretend it's Friday. You okay. Know? Michelle's really putting her foot down. You guys, did you hear that? Yep. She is not going to buy into this dreading. I'm not Monday's thing anymore. I'm, I have decided that every day could be fun and a party Friday, Friday. It's Friday. Friday. You know it's what? Friday. You could be listening to this on any day of the week, but if you're this listening when it was released, yeah. it's a Wednesday. Why so are we tying it? you with yeah. our Monday talk. We, we have to stop. Yeah. You know, you would think after five years of doing this, we would have learned that by now. Like, don't tie the episode to a specific day. This episode is actually one of those. This could have been in our first season ever topic wise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it could be something that we talk about again in three years. Like it's very, um, evergreen, evergreen. So the topic is alternative flowers. We do get questions about this. We Mm -hmm. have talked about it on a Yawa, I believe specifically about, uh, quality of like my mother-in-law told me we should just get fake flowers. And she's really into that. And is that going to look terrible? And our thoughts about that. And also We did answer one, I think in the last year about solo wood, because I remember looking it up and and I remember saying, what's that? I never heard of that before. And then all of a sudden, boom, it blew up. So the episode was recorded in two parts and with two guests, actually three, because the uh, two sisters that own a company called Silk Stem Collective are on talking about their company, which is not just silk flowers, but rental silk flowers. Yeah. So you go to their website, you pick the look you want. And then there's like this menu, it's brilliant of options of what you need. 
you put your order together and then they ship it all to you. You use it and you ship it back. And they have lots of ways to keep this as sustainable as possible, even with like cardboard and packing and shipping. But obviously you're reusing the same flowers that another wedding or five weddings has used. And, um, I really, it's, it's it, like I said, it's brilliant business model. Then the it other really part, is. and I think the first part is all about the solo wood flowers and solo wood. If you don't know, is sort of like balsa wood. It's a manufactured wood, I believe. So it's very, very thin and pliable and they almost look like shells. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, those lamps that hang down, you know, like West Elm or Pottery Barn has those lamps that have like the shell hanging. shades. But yeah. Kind mm-hmm. of that like translucent, mm-hmm. similar to that, at least in my, my mind it is. Um, so we're talking to a wedding planner. Her name is Maria and she has her own wedding planning company called Caramia Events. Caramia. And she's also a part of, uh, or one of the founding members of something called the Green Wedding Guild. All these links are on our show notes. And she herself opted for the solo wood flowers. And I'm talking to her about why, what the quality was like, what people thought about it, pros and cons, um, and really like what led her to that decision. And it's really interesting. So she has personal experience with it. Would highly recommend it to any of the couples that she works with now. Would um, get she it? She would. Yes, yeah. she would. <laughs> um, and then again, Silk Stem Collective and the two sisters that founded that company are talking to us about how it all came together and why there's a very big difference between faux flowers that you can get at like a big box craft store. Yeah which is generally what people think about when they yep. think. And that, that's what they, that's what they see in their mind. Mm-hmm. Like, and it has a certain yeah. smell to it. Yeah. 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 And the difference between that and high quality. Okay, good. So we've got two different types of alternative flowers, yes. alternative to live or actually they're dead because kind of, but uh, that's good. Okay, good. And the company is called Silk Stem Collective and they are offering a promo code. So, oh yeah, we want you to know the promo code now. And then as you're looking, as you're listening to this episode, maybe check it out, offering 20% off of any order over 200. And the code is podcast 20. A podcast 20. Plus free shipping. And that's Silk Stem Collective. Um, and all of this information will be on our show notes on our website as usual. And if you have any questions about alternative wedding flowers, please send them to us, email us, DM us. And if we don't know the answer, we will certainly forward them on to one of our lovely guests from this episode. Oh, goody. Okay. I didn't do this. I didn't do these interviews with you. So I'm excited to hear this. It's very educational. Promo code again for Silk Stem Collective is podcast two zero. Yep. 20% off and free shipping 20% off of $200 or more. Yes. That's a good savings. Yes. Very good. That's really and good. They have a great Instagram page. So these flowers do not look fake. I don't know how else to say that without sounding like that's the biggest compliment. They don't yeah. look fake, but they yeah. don't, if you see them, that is, it just doesn't even cross your mind. So okay. check it out. Think about it. Maybe there's an alternative to fresh flowers and the budget that comes with that at your wedding. All right, here we go. Hi, my name is Maria Karagianis. I'm based in North Carolina. I own Caramia Events and am the co-founder of the Green Wedding Guild. And I purchased Solowood bouquets and flowers for my own wedding. Nice, well, thank you, welcome. Um, and your own wedding was what year? 2018. Okay. So getting on the three year mark. What is the Green Wedding Guild? So the Green Wedding Guild is an organization that aims to spread awareness and educate other wedding professionals about sustainable weddings and what and sustainable practices for weddings. Um, A lot of the times wedding vendors are a couple's first touch point for what they will do for their wedding. So if they're all, if they are working with vendors who are already putting certain sustainable practices into place and, or are already well-versed in 
what sustainable options there are, we believe we'll be on a better track toward a greener uh, and more sustainable industry as a whole. That's awesome. So when I got in touch with you, it was because I found out from Megan, who's uh, owner of Silk Stem Collective, the whole topic is alternative wedding flowers. And she said she knows somebody who used solo wood flowers because I mentioned between silk flowers or fabric, like faux flowers and sola, I wanted to mention both as options. Both you and Megan mentioned when we talked about it that the idea of sustainability was a huge reason why people choose these alternatives for flowers for weddings. Tell us about, tell me about your thought process, I get, or the whole process and planning for your own wedding and what circumstances like played into why you eventually chose Sola. Yes. So it was, there were a few different options on the table because there are absolutely sustainable ways to source and dispose of real cut flowers. You can look for locally grown florals that are in season and work with a local florist to have them put together and arranged without floral foam and then arrange to have them donated and or composted at the end of an event. So there are ways to have real flowers that are sustainable. You mentioned that, the floral foam. So what is like, tell yeah. us what that means. The floral foam is pretty notorious for being toxic and also contributing to microplastic pollution because it is ultimately, if you ever held it in your hands, you realize it falls apart very easily. And that's basically little microplastics. And then if those go down the sink or into waterways, that's going to ultimately be a part of microplastic pollution. So there are many methods of designing floral arrangements that do not include this floral foam. And in my experience, florists do like to be able to use flowers that are grown seasonally and locally because they're fresher Mm -hmm. and they're going to last a lot longer as well. Um, and I originally was thinking about getting real flowers for my wedding, but then a bunch of different factors came into play. First, the first one was I didn't know of, at least at the time, any nursery, any florists or nurseries that were local enough to where we were getting married on Long Island. And that was one more just one more component to kind of add to long distance planning that at the time I was not really prepared for. So you lived Um, where and where you were planning the wedding? I was planning from North Carolina and getting married on Long Island because that's where the majority of our family was. And as a way of making it more convenient for the majority of everyone and also reducing travel emissions, we got married up there. Yes, I can see why a florist, choosing a florist, working with a florist, and then purchasing everything when you know you're just going to get in a car or a plane and come back afterwards would be like sort of daunting. Like what is, what else could we do? Uh, Including that you didn't know offhand any like super local florists that you could be like, oh yeah, that's highly recommended. So we'll just go with them. Right. And I have since connected with a number of florists, uh, specifically in like the Brooklyn area that are focused more on sustainable flowers. So that's one great thing. But at the time I hadn't been familiar with them. And there was also the added layer of cost. And, you know, we have some relatives who are allergic to flowers, such as my mother. So And I've always been the kind of person that kind of wanted to keep my bouquet. Like I wanted it to last longer, but I don't love how they look when they're dried or preserved. Mm -hmm. So when I came across the solo wood bouquets and saw that they were majoritively made from sustainable materials, since the solo wood is, I believe it's a byproduct of the tapioca plant. um, That seemed like a great option. It seemed like something that would be reusable. I figured since our families are pretty old fashioned in the way that they will still take the centerpieces home. Mm-hmm. Um, I figured since they would probably get either taken home or whatever we'd have left over could easily be sold for someone else to use or enjoy that that seemed like a good investment. And then cost wise, it wound up being significantly lower than had we gotten any arrangements from a florist. And you can keep your bouquet and it's and sitting on your dresser bouquet. and it still is, looks... it is still sitting on my dresser and I get to look at it every morning and it makes me smile still. <laughs> so 
I'd say that, especially for the bouquet, that was a great investment. You got your, I mean, obviously you want something to look beautiful. And in our call, you mentioned like the bottom line is fresh, like a beautiful, fresh bouquet is going to look different than a Sola bouquet of the same, you know, try the same like level of quality or what you were mm-hmm. expecting. But the closer you look, the more you can see that it's wood. What did you think about the look? Well, many of our guests were very surprised that upon like closer inspection of the centerpieces to see that they weren't real flowers. And the same thing with like mine and my bridesmaids bouquets, they did didn't really, they couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, for the most part, couldn't tell either. I personally liked them better than um, most other faux options that I had seen, at least prior to seeing the high quality silk options that Silk Stem Collective, for example, has. I've seen their thing, their items in person and the, the quality is amazing. But that is really different than what you would get if you like walked into a craft store. Yes. For the most part really from is. fabric or solo. The quality that you got and you ordered them online, like you uh, opened those boxes and it was, I mean, surprising, great, what you expected. Yeah, I'd say it was what I expected. I had done a fair amount of research and looked at a lot of photos before ordering um, I believe I was even able to order a sample from one of the Etsy shops that I had looked at. So I kind of saw firsthand what I was getting beforehand, before we received it. And then I was really pleased uh, when I ordered my bouquet. Is it pretty sturdy or is it delicate? Like you could snap a petal. I mean, you could easily snap off a petal. I would say they are, they are pretty durable you still want to be careful with mm-hmm. them. They're, I would say they're not necessarily as sturdy as maybe a fabric flower bouquet that's kind of held together a little differently. I have had some petals fall off or break here and there, but for the most part, if it's on display and not being touched, mm-hmm. you know, if I, I wouldn't, you know, go hitting it against anything or yeah. else it will get damaged. Would you suggest... Um, solo wood for your clients now? Do you, would you include it as like one of the many options you suggest? Like how would you go about now? Your wedding was only three years ago, but a lot has changed or, you know, vendors are doing different things. So what do you think now? So I think I would ask the, ask a client kind of what their thoughts were if they if they knew if they, if they wanted to go for real flowers or if they wanted to know about different alternatives and kind of take it from there. But I would definitely mention Sola and Silk Rentals as options for faux flowers. Yeah. Cause with Silk Rentals, obviously they're rentals and you would be giving that you send them back afterwards, but I'm sure there right. are plenty of, com- you know, ways to keep it as well. Um, I guess that's it. I, we will be sharing some of the pictures from your wedding. So on the graphics and our promos for this episode, if you see Sola Wood or we're mentioning it, that is from Maria's wedding a few years ago. It's really nice to have somebody that like personally chose what we're talking about rather than just hearing it from a planner's perspective. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about this option. There is no one size fits all option. Everybody's going to have a different take on what they prefer, but this one happened to work for me and I liked it. So and I'm sure there are others that will feel the same way and I'm happy to talk about it. That's, yeah. And it's, and it goes along with the green idea for weddings and sustainability. So um, give us your handle, Instagram or website links for your company and Green Wedding Guild one more time. Yeah. So for the Green Wedding Guild, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Green Wedding Guild. Uh, and then you can get find us on our website, www.greenweddingguild.com. My planning business, Karamia Events. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at caramia.events. And my website is www.caramiaevents.com. Excellent. And those will be, those links are on our website as always. So thank you so much. My name is Megan and I'm the co-founder of Silk Sun Collective. And I'm here with my sister, Amanda, who was the other founder. 
Hi, my name is Amanda. I'm the co-founder, like Megan said, and I am out of Chicago. Very good. So you're both the co-founders and you do not live in the same state Correct. and you run the business. Awesome. So we have already talked to um, your friend and the person, the connection that you gave me, uh, Maria, about her wedding flowers. So I talked to you first, Megan, and that was when I got in touch with you from Silkstem Collective, who I think I DM'd you um, because we wanted to do an episode about alternative wedding flowers, which is what this the title is. But I think that it would be nice to hear how you started the company since that started with a wedding. And that's where my podcast started also. Yeah. So in early 2020, I was planning my wedding and, um, to be honest, my husband and I are not huge wedding people, uh, which is kind of ironic, but, uh, we just couldn't see ourselves spending two grand on flowers, which is a typical average. Um, so we were looking for fresh flower alternatives and, um, I really just, I loved the look of fresh, so I didn't want to compromise on that. So my sister and I went to a local craft store to look at the artificial flowers there, and they were just not a good option for me. A lot of the options there did not look very realistic. They looked pretty plasticky, and they just kind of smelled funky. Um, Totally. Yeah. So we're talking like a big box, big brand store. Right. It was just a local craft store. I feel like a lot of people have been in that floral aisle that's just... You know, there's some hidden gems, but a lot of them are, are not, not great. It's like where we go when we need like sunflowers for a wreath that you're going to give, you know, you're going to like, I'm going to make my own wreath for the teachers this year or whatever for like, I'm going to get crafty. And I'm always a little bit surprised by how expensive they are. The fake flower, you know, the, that flower aisle, if you wanted to do something elaborate, like it's kind of expensive just right there. And the, and the quality is you're not fooling anyone. Right. And it does, it adds up really fast because it's usually by STEM. And if you want that fuller look, it it can get really expensive really fast. So let me ask the 2000 or like your ballpark, was that what you guys, you and your partner had sort of allotted in your budget or you done some research to be like, okay, 10 centerpieces, some bridesmaids and some boutonnieres. And that's kind of the pre the like range that was coming up. Yeah, we knew at the time it was pre COVID when we started planning. So we had a guest count and size of a wedding in mind and, um, through research online, we just knew that was about the price range that we'd be in if we went with a traditional forest. And sometimes they have minimums anyway. So it right. might've been like straight up. That's how much you have to spend. Um, but that's kind of what we were, what you were looking at, like 10 ish centerpieces. I'm just trying to give people an idea of like what you wanted initially or what you thought you were going to get. I think it was like 15 centerpieces. And then we had a wedding party of 10. So, um, five bridesmaids bouquets plus a bridal bouquet, and then a bunch of boutonnieres and, and corsages. And then we had also looked at a large floral arch at one point, but that was just completely out of the budget. And yeah, that's, That's those like Pinterest dreams when you're like, what I really want is a ceiling covered in upside down tulips. (laughs) And then like that was, but I pinned it from a budget website or what, you know, budget bride or whatever. I'm not pulling that. I'm making that up. But the reality is like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars spent on something elaborate like that. Um, Especially with a structure, right? A arch or arbor or whatever. Um, Amanda, were you just like tagging along or were you helping to brainstorm like, okay, well, if fresh flowers are that expensive, like let's go see what fake flowers look like. Or were were you just in town? Um, I would say I was being uh, your typical sister of, you know, living vicariously through her, through her wedding plans. Um, So I was involved in a lot of the decor planning, but the flowers, especially I was really interesting because I've always heard um, that fresh flowers aren't um, great for the environment. So I had sort of latched on to the fake flower idea. Um, So I did initially help her um, try to source some um, wholesale flowers that were, um, you know, maybe more realistic than some of the craft store ones. And 
interestingly enough, we actually, we found some very hyper-realistic flowers, um, but on a per stem basis, they were sometimes even more expensive than fresh flowers just because of the materials mm -hmm. that they're made of. Um, and because it's such a specialty item, there's not, you know, a huge market for hyper-realistic silk flowers. Um, yeah, they're not widely available. Like I didn't, right. I actually Googled hyper-realistic flowers after Megan and I talked. Like, is that a thing? Like, is that what people would mm -hmm. Google? Or are you just like standing in the craft store? Like we need some hyper-realistic options. You do definitely have to search out the, the realistic ones, both from the wholesalers and from the craft stores. There are a lot of um, materials like uh, natural materials or you know latex silk things like that that make them look much more realistic than the the, the plastic craft store ones um we were sort of put off by the price knowing that it was going to be probably comparable in cost to invest in the artificial flowers um which is kind of how we got the idea of you know maybe we should try to sell these after we're done to another mm -hmm. bride that you know is in a similar situation um, which is the double benefit of like recouping mm -hmm. some of the investment and also recycle reuse mm -hmm. and we had yeah. we had such good um, feedback from the bridal party and relatives that really um you know liked the realism of them some of them didn't even know that they were fake um that we just kind of you know we really liked the idea of continuing to use that model so that other couples could have the same benefits that she saw of having a good realistic alternative to a traditional fresh florist if the if you're looking and you found a website and you found a place that sourced what you were looking for but you saw how much they were per stem mm -hmm. that made me think that i should probably like side note in there because i'm not necessarily anti-wedding florist because there's a craftsmanship and like you're going to order these stems you still have to arrange them mm -hmm like you, you personally, and like put them together so that, you know, the aesthetics of it and the design, it would be like ordering fresh flowers from a wholesale mart where you just get them and you still have to cut and put together and twine or ribbon. I mean, did you know that? Like you were ready for the, you know, that's a challenge and I'm into that. Or was that, did you have friends to help? How did you guys make those decisions? Um, we both have, I would say a pretty good design sense um, floral arranging is definitely an art <laughs> and it's not something that we knew how to do beforehand. Um, but we kind of figured we could test it out and see how it went. Uh, a lot of couples do choose to do DIY fresh florals and there is definitely a craftsmanship level that you mm -hmm. get with a traditional florist that you don't get by DIYing them. Um, but we thought we could come pretty close by assembling the, the single stems ourselves. And we're a little more forgiving, surprised. right? Yeah. Uh, they're very, um, flexible they're usually wire in the stem so you can uh, it makes them very resilient and um, durable in terms of uh, moving them around so that it creates a good look um, so we played around with them for a while and we decided we were pretty successful in how they looked uh, we were happy with the the aesthetic that they were that they're providing and you had your centerpieces your bridesmaid bouquets and your bouquet and boutonnieres also Correct. We did, I want to say 10 or 15 boutonnieres and then another 10 or so corsages, uh, which corsages and boutonnieres tend to be, because they're so labor intensive for traditional florists, uh, they do tend to uh, add up quickly when you're doing a large amount of them. Uh, so there was a great, uh, there's, there's a great cost savings there um, for mm -hmm. faux versus fresh because you only have to do the labor once versus a fresh florist has to make them every time that they, uh, that they sell them. So on the wedding, you've done all this research and then picked what you were going to order, ordered it, received it, arranged it, had your wedding, and the feedback from the people there was like, these are beautiful. And then you're like, we're thinking of selling them maybe after. What do you guys think of that? And everyone was like, that's a good idea. You should figure out how to do that. Is that yeah, where we, we got are? Some, kind of? uh, we got some good feedback from Megan's bridal party, and we just really liked them ourselves. Um, and we kind of uh, got passionate about it, <laughs> about uh, making this sort of option available to other couples who maybe don't have the time or the know-how to assemble and source all of the flowers themselves, but they want that fresh flower alternative. Uh, so we started to, uh, or I started to research uh, if this was something that was already on the market. Um, did someone else have this idea before and you know already execute it? Um, and there are a couple. Um, it is something that is out there, but it's not very well known. 
and we thought that our the realism of our flowers uh, was a step above the ones that we were seeing on uh, a couple of other similar sites. So really just as we did the research, the passion just kept growing of, hey, this is really something that we think other couples would really love and we think it's a, a hole in the market that, that we could fill. For weddings specifically. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it turned into the seed was planted for what you were going to do, but then it turned into renting as a, as a business model, rent and return basically. Right. Yeah. So what was that the, the price of the uh, realistic silk flowers was high enough that uh, simply assembling and selling them didn't make it as good of a, a competitive cost alternative to fresh flowers because the cost was comparable between the labor and the investment in the silk flowers. Uh, whereas the rental option uh, made it so that it was a cost-effective alternative. It's about a third less, it's about a third of the price of fresh flowers. Um, so, but that was only possible with the rent and return model. Got it. We, and we have had Rent My Wedding on, which was a long time ago, like I would say in our first or second year or season. Um, and they do like up lights and, uh, linens, like equipment basically. And the idea is like you go online and you can get these packages and you order what you need, but you could also do a la carte sort of items. Um, if they have like a dance package and I'm kind of making this up, but that whole episode, we were like, Oh, we hadn't, we had not worked with that company as wedding planners. And I still recommend them to people we consult with, like through the podcast or, you know, brides and grooms that just pay me for some consulting in planning, but don't have a planner, but that might also mean that they don't have a florist or they don't have a DJ. And so they're doing more DIY stuff, but they still want it to be professional and professional looking on the wedding day. So they would rent the up lights and then set them up themselves. And then afterwards they'd return them. And that just seemed like brilliant. Like, of course that's, that makes sense to do. So how did you like, when, when you said you looked at the other companies or other places that were doing this, like it was an option, but not widely known, which I still don't think it's all that widely known that, you, that this is an option. But if your flowers were more realistic or you thought, you know, that the look was different, then does that mean you're getting all of your product from one dealer, <laughs> like one who, and then the, and other companies are getting them from somewhere else or is everything pretty much made by just a few, like, how does it work in this industry? Um, we don't know specifically where our uh, competitors get their flowers from, uh, but there are a fair number of artificial flower wholesalers uh, in the U S and some overseas. Um, the, Obviously, the larger quantities that you buy in are, re are required for wholesaling. So we weren't able to do that right at the beginning. Um, but we found that the some of the flowers that we see in our competitors are similar or the same, you know, stems as we've mm -hmm. seen on some of our suppliers. But it's really it comes down to a cost versus quality. Uh, on you can you can pick all hyper realistic flowers and end up with a fairly expensive bouquet that may take longer to recoup your costs in renting or right. you can make one that uh, maybe has a little bit lower quality flowers but pays itself off much quick much more quickly and it's just a balance of choosing which flowers you want to include versus which ones you're willing to skimp on realism because maybe they're not a focal flower of the bouquet and i think the different competitors just have a different balance between cost and realism some couples are going more for the cost savings and some are going more for the, the realism, like fresh. Okay. That makes sense. So it's not, so it is also a range of suppliers. It's not like when you keep climbing up to the top, pretty much everyone's getting them from the same place. There are various places. Correct. Yep. So you heard like, from what I can okay. tell, there's a, a fairly large number of factories and they each make uh, maybe a specific type of flower or a range of, of color line or a range of flowers in a specific material. And then the distributors are able to uh, collect all of the different flowers from the different factories and offer them to the people uh, in the U.S. who want to buy them wholesale. Got it. So if anybody's listening to this and they're at their computer, they would look up Silk Stem Collective to see what we're talking about, because I want to talk about 
what you offer. Now we know it's highly realistic, hyper-realistic silk and fabric flowers for weddings and that they're packaged. A cer- I think they're packaged. It, it was brilliant when I went to the website, like, oh, I get it. It took me like looking at how you can order by style and you've named up. So uh, my question is to start, are you still getting the stent? Like, are you physically making the arrangements that are in each of these packages? Correct. We do order all of this, the loose stems wholesale and we assemble them ourselves. Uh, we have a growing inventory, but our inventory is usually based on what people are ordering. So we tend to make more of the items that uh, are popular and we grow our inventory that way. Um, and, and ordering the fresh stems as we see things are becoming more popular. But yes, we have uh, eight, different, eight different collections right now. Uh, we do have people mix and match collections, so there is quite a variety, but we have eight main collections to choose from with uh, seven to nine items in each collection. And I do want to say, I think Amanda is being pretty modest here. I think she really has a gift for floral arranging, even though she's not traditionally trained. She's always been a very creative person, but um, you know, she did a lot of research when she first started arranging. and. Um, the things that she makes are just, are just beautiful. I wish I had that kind of talent. Thanks. Nice. So I agree, like looking at the, I just clicked on like the Florence collection and it has a lot of Dusty Miller, which is this, um, I I think we used, we've called it lamb's ear too. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So if you're imagining like the greenery in a bouquet, like I use, have seen these a lot around winter weddings, but it's that really soft, almost velvety, pale seafoam green, dusty kind of uh, leaf. And it's in a lot of the collection, this Florence collection. But it's something that I think looks fake, even when it's real, because it's just had like, you almost want to just like touch it and be like, is that real or fake? Like certain plants are, um, have those kind of textures. So there's no chance looking at these flowers that I would it wouldn't even occur to me like the pictures and that's not in person. And of course you're putting good quality pictures up, but the, it it definitely looks professional. Like, like a florist is the one who arranged these and that these are real and the way that it's set out, you get to see exactly like I might be looking at the exact bouquet that's going to arrive in a box. Correct. That's the other uh, upside of, renting faux versus getting fresh is that there isn't an an easy way for a florist to show you exactly what you're going to get on your wedding day. Flower availability changes, flowers are in and out of season. They can make great recommendations and you can give them a great inspiration board. But at the end of the day, you don't know what you're going to get until the actual day of your wedding, right? Uh, And a lot of times if you have a good florist, that's not a big deal. Uh, But the upside of this is that the bouquet that you see in those photos will be it, uh, not the exact one because we have you know multiples of each bouquet, but the flowers, the greenery is all the exact same flowers and greenery that will be in the one that you receive. So it gives you an easier way to color match or you know plan uh, accessories, things like that, because you know exactly totally. what the flowers will look like. Yeah. So I mean, and you could get it, unbox it, pull up the website, hold it up, look at the website. I mean, there would be mm-hmm. if it wasn't what was represented, then it's a phone call or I'm assuming just, you know, reaching out to you and being like, I don't know, is there a way for me to like fluff this out or it's smaller than I expected or like, or, oh my God, this looks exactly like what's on the website, which would probably be the preferred (laughs) reaction. Yeah, we do have a um, sample program, which definitely helps with that. You can order a uh, bridesmaid bouquet size of any of the eight collections and receive that ahead of time. So you can make sure that the flowers are what you want and that the colors are what you were expecting. It's always hard with computer screens, you know, if you can't see it in person to, to color match. So between the sample program and between our uh, slightly longer rental period than our competitors, uh, it does allow enough time for if by chance you open something and it's, you know, not exactly what you wanted or uh, maybe something is, you know, got damaged in transit, it does allow enough time for us to overnight something that um, will correct the problem and, and get you what you want for, for your big day. I mean, this is 
brilliant. So I'm going to read just off what is in this. This is the Florence collection and all of the collections are pretty much what is in this one, right? Except it's different mm -hmm. colors, textures, different flowers. Bridal bouquet, bridesmaid bouquet, a mini bouquet, which it looks like the bridesmaid bouquet, but I don't know, half the size-ish. Mm -hmm. A large centerpiece, a small centerpiece, boutonnieres, corsages, aisle markers, garlands, and sign swag, which I've seen at more and more weddings that I've done recently. So that's when somebody has like a big welcome sign or a um, seating chart, and it is a you know stand-up display or even like a bar menu, and then kind of wired on the back of it and overhanging on the sign is flowers that look like they're kind of tumbling out. And sometimes they're a, almost like a combination of a bouquet and a garland, um, which you could also drape this garland that you included, if not on tables, then on signs or, I mean, you really, for this, these prices are easily half, if not a third of what you would be looking at for fresh flowers. Do they come with the um, containers? Uh, for the centerpieces, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, so that's actually one thing that uh, we think is a big uh, upside to our service is that the bridesmaid bouquet and the large centerpiece are the same bouquet, but it comes with the white vase. And then the small centerpiece and the mini bouquet are also the same. So if you order bridesmaid bouquets, you can get the vase to go with it. And now all of your bridesmaid bouquets can be centerpieces for either your head table or maybe some of your guest tables. And then same thing with the mini bouquets. Got it. So tell me about how, like now that you've been, this is, you're doing it. And I was wondering first, like what you're hearing from couples or brides or any, you know, moms, anybody that's by renting these from you? Like, do you see pictures afterwards and what do you hear? And also I was wondering, and maybe this is different for both of you, I'm not sure, but how important is sustainability? Like was sustainability and like the idea of having a, a greener wedding kind of the top driving reason to do all of this or not? Um, Cause I think it wasn't, the top of my mind when I first reached out to you, Megan, for when um, we just wanted to talk to a company that's doing this. And it, it like the sustainability is like built in with that like reuse, recycle mantra that we all know, but it didn't occur to me that that might be the number one reason why somebody might be your client. Yeah, I'll start with the sustainability. I think as uh, an engineer that has a pretty day-to-day um, -day background in, in the environmental side. Um, for myself, it was a large driver, but we do realize that usually a wedding is not uh, something that you want to necessarily compromise what you want for sustainability. So we put a lot of emphasis on making sure that the product was above all affordable and that the affordability drove uh, couples to choose it as an option and that they would hopefully see the sustainability as a nice perk that went along yeah. with the affordability rather than the sole driver. Because we do recognize that, you know, a lot of people want to be environmentally friendly, but they also might want fresh flowers at their wedding uh, and mm -hmm. may not be willing to compromise on that because it is a special day. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, I think that's more what I was thinking in, in talking and wanting to like provide our listeners like, hey, if you're doing, you're trying to save money, you're doing a lot of DIY anyway, here's an option, an alternative floral option. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the more we talk to Maria and now you guys, it is, it, it just boosts the sustainability part in my like framework of thinking about it. But also there is that thing with weddings, people sort of like, they're like, I am a person who recycles religiously. I care. I don't do this. I don't do that. I make sure I eat this or that, you know, no meat Mondays. Like they might do the whole thing, but then they're like, but full stop. I am not going to do, I'm like letting all that go on my wedding. Um, because it's just one day and we're already spending an ungodly amount and there's nothing rational about it. And so I'm just going to like release myself from 
the guilt that comes with all the consuming and the like wedding industrial complex and the same guilt is tied into like how much money you're spending on this one day. So people, it, what we're hearing that a lot of people planning their weddings are like, I, I just can't with the green and the sustainability just for this one day. I can't because it's complicated and it makes me feel bad. But our advice, it, like, and nobody's perfect, but our advice is like anything you do to, to have a more sustainable element of your wedding, anything you do is better than not doing anything at all. It really is okay to be like, I'm thinking about silk flower rentals because I like the idea. It makes me feel better. It's more environmentally friendly. And also I'm saving 1500 bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our, we never want to, would want to guilt a couple, you know, into thinking that they are being a bad person by going with, with fresh flowers. A lot of people aren't aware even of some of the environmental costs of, of fresh flowers in terms of the refrigeration or the, the long distance transport. Trans, and we also yeah. aren't intending to be zero waste either. Uh, you know, the flowers are still, um, you know, artificial materials. They're still shipped. Um, but we do reuse our packaging and we don't uh, have to use any floral foam, which is uh, something that a lot of florists are trying to get away from using. Uh, but it is nice to have an, a more environmentally friendly for option for people that do want to go that route that still gets them the beauty of fresh flowers, uh, you know, rather than go with an artificial option that's maybe not a flower at all. Mm -hmm. What was your thinking Megan, for your own wedding. And I know it was like best laid plans and then worldwide pandemic, but like, what was the journey that you took as a bride at the time and then into this being a business now? Yeah. So, I mean, the flowers were actually one of the few things we did not have to change because of the pandemic. So that kind of stability was nice. Um, but yeah, when I was planning the wedding, I think like Amanda was saying, I, I was one of those people that just didn't want to compromise on beauty for sustainability. So I think as a bride, that was a huge plus for me and just a plus for us as a couple, you know. Um, and then once I realized that it worked so well for us and for our wedding, that easily transitioned into a business because I felt so passionately that other people would love this too. Like other people also don't want to spend $2,000 on flowers. Other people also want really beautiful floral options that don't look plasticky and, and look like real flowers. Um, so from, from that perspective, it just became really naturally. Yeah. And that is interesting that that was an element you didn't have to change because you didn't have a vendor, a hired professional on the hook for a contract that now, you know, is postponed a year or certain flowers aren't going to be in season anymore, or I'm a business that's not going to survive this like situation. Like in terms of um, plan A, B, and C that a lot of couples have to figure out now, this kind of takes the guesswork out of that because you've ordered them. And I'm assuming if you have to change dates or, you know, it would just be a matter of like, is it still available if we were to, like, do people in this past year, have you been receiving, um, I guess, from the customer service side, like, hey, scratch summer 2020, now we're gonna be a year out. And are you able to accommodate most of those changes pretty easily? Thankfully, uh, well, partially thankfully, we didn't launch our website until August of last year. So the pandemic was well underway. Uh, a lot of people had already postponed their weddings for a year, sometimes two years. So we didn't have uh, a lot of orders come in that had to be canceled. Uh, we, do, we did design our cancellation policy uh, around COVID, knowing that uh, a lot of brides had had struggles with uh, vendors due to COVID. So we do have a fairly forgiving policy in terms of cancellations or rebookings. You know, we don't have uh, the wholesale flower order on the hook, like a lot of florists. Right. Uh, rebooking the, the bouquet is much easier for us. So what about shipping in terms of timing? You said you have a pretty, like a bigger grace period or that, you know, you can expect them so many days ahead of time, but has 
I mean, I know mail is slower, like th everything is a little bit, we, we worked with some advertisers who used to say two day delivery guaranteed. And then they would email us and be like, actually, can you change that in the next month's ads? Because we're just, we're at the mercy of the system and we don't know that it will get there in two to three days. How have y'all navigated that? We quote uh, the flowers as arriving bef uh, four to five days before your event date. In reality, we uh, use FedEx, which has been fairly reliable. We haven't had any uh, late deliveries, uh, but in reality, we ship them soon enough that the usual arrival date is more like a week, which gives enough time for them to unbox them and make sure that everything is as they expected it would be. And we can usually overnight or two day ship something also with FedEx, uh, which allows us enough time for, for changes if we need to. Uh, USPS has been uh, much more unreliable during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, but thankfully we haven't had any, any major issues with FedEx. Yeah, that is true. Not that I wish FedEx would sponsor us, but <laughs> we, I have FedEx some things recent, like we're telling brides, even brides, I say brides, but they're the ones asking, but brides and grooms when they're talking about invitations and I'm going to send out, you know, a hundred of these and uh, wh when should I send out my invitations? And it, usually we would have an answer that's like eight weeks or something, you know, a pat like wedding planner answer. But now it's like, well, you know, uh, like uh, my brother and his partner live in the same house and sent me mother's day cards. Like they put them, one of them put them in the mail at the same time. And they came two weeks apart and they're the exact same shape stamp, nothing way. It just was like bizarre two week, one came a week early, one came a week late and they were sent at the exact same time. And that's just the nature of uh, the mess that is USPS right now. So FedEx has been very reliable in my experience as well. And that overnight option while costly is a goddamn miracle. As far as I'm concerned, I don't get how they do that. Like from here to, you know, across the country, less than 24 hours door to door, that just seems wild to me. So I guess you always have that in your back pocket. You know, if, so, if someone's willing to pay or you're going to pay for, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we realized that not having flowers on your wedding day would be a very uh, large impact on your event. So we do, if it was uh, an item that wasn't included or something got damaged in shipping, we will front the cost to overnight to make 100% sure that uh, the order that you got for your wedding that that you won't ever see a couple at the altar with no with no flowers on their wedding. Yeah. So after all said and done, now almost a year, actually it might be about a year in business by the time this episode, right? So this August would be one year for you. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Congratulations. So after all that, what are you loving about it and what have you heard from renters or clients, customers that, what are they loving? One of the biggest things that sticks out to me that I've heard from people that we've rented to is the flexibility of being able to order something and know that it will look fresh, whether you use it on Saturday or on Sunday. Um, for example, we do a lot of style shoots uh, for photographers uh, getting, you know, generating content for their social media. And fresh flowers, a lot of times is not a great option for that because you're usually doing either a single bouquet or maybe a bouquet and yes. arrangement. And a lot of flower uh, florists can't do that easily because uh, they get most of their flowers wholesale, which are too large of quantities to make one, bou uh, one bouquet. So and you have to wait for like the peony to open and, or like, you know, to be that perfect, like photo worthy, especially for styled shoots. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know everybody loves when like, the flowers look good even after the styled shoot because then they sort of do more styled. I mean, all it takes is great lighting and a bouquet by a window mm -hmm. for something to be able to post. So I would imagine that there's like a lot of bang for your buck with styled shoots. I hadn't thought of that. Like that's- Elopements yes, are that's also similar. Very smart. A lot of people know that they're going to elope. You know, they're going to go to the courthouse some uh, day this month and they want to have something to hold for their photos. But- uh, they may not know the exact date or they don't know if it's going to be indoor or outdoor. Uh, it works great for things like that, where they have a little bit of flexibility where the bouquet will look great, whether they do it on Friday night or Sunday morning. Um, and then being able to use the flowers maybe at dinner afterwards as decor. Uh, so the flexibility has been a big one. Um, durability in hot weather. 
Um, a lot of flowers, uh, especially for non center pieces where they're not in water, uh, don't last very long in really heavy heat. Um, things like peonies or um, other flowers that, that white flowers that will turn brown very quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's just not an issue for, for faux flowers. They'll stay white all day. Um, you don't, don't have to worry wilt. about setting them down. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, getting one side of your bouquet mashed. Um, a lot of brides I know even order um, backup bouquets in case something happens to, to their main bouquet. Um, so just, just the flexibility of being able to use it for things where maybe fresh flowers aren't ideal. So you can get as much or as little within the collection. I mean, people mm -hmm. just might get a bouquet for themselves and a bouquet for mm -hmm. their bridesmaid. And that, just that's a it. bridal bouquet and a boutonniere, like for an mm -hmm. elopement. Uh, so a lot of people mix uh, faux and fresh. So maybe they want a real uh, flower bouquet for themselves as, as you know, the star of the show, but they're willing to compromise on the centerpieces because they need 25 of them. <laughs> um, or something like boutonnieres where the labor costs are high and they can get them for, uh, from us for a much lower cost and still have them the day of because you don't want to not have boutonnieres. Um, so yeah, mixing faux and, and fresh has been a good option for a lot of people. Totally. We should talk about that for a second because the garlands are what I would, but I've seen that more with, we've hired a florist for all of our personal flowers and like our sweetheart table and the bridesmaids are going to use their bouquets as other centerpieces. But what we just love the look of a really lush garland down the middle of the table. So getting like the eucalyptus one that you have I don't know, doubling, I don't know, how long are they? Uh, most of them are six feet, some are four feet, but they all have the uh, dimensions listed on the website. So you can get as many as you need and string them together. Yeah, and then putting in, like popping in some fresh stems in it or like lining it with candles or dressing it up or putting some real on top, some real eucalyptus for the smell and like the, uh, just like the branches of it on top of, your garland would make for a very lush, full looking garland. So I have definitely done weddings where I'm out there like laying the garlands before the florist comes to drop off the fresh flowers and then sort of like sprucing them up. Mm -hmm. um, but they can get expensive and they're always sold, you know, by the foot basically. So that's, this is a great, that's a great option also. And for other things like the sign swag, for example, sometimes it's hard for a florist to create something with the water container involved you know to keep it it lasting for the whole event uh whereas ours you know you can you don't need a big heavy uh water container that's going to have to be on your sign somewhere uh because it's just you know it's just the flowers and the clip on the back so it's not nearly as much weight it's not as much to have to to deal with if it's going to fall apart it's just much it's much more stress-free for either the wedding planner or the couple themselves if they're the one setting up the decor very good so you've heard from buyers also that the, that flexibility and the ability to just get mm -hmm. exactly what they need is mm -hmm. what ultimately made them like hit purchase and do it. Yep. Any final like thoughts or tips or, um, you know, things to little takeaways, something to consider pep talks, anything that kind of speaking to those couples who are like, Oh, I hadn't imagined that we have thousands of people listening and being like, huh, I hadn't thought of that. Like, I'm going to look into it. Um, I'll let Megan answer also, but I would just reiterate that um, we realize there is a lot of uh, fear around faux flowers. There's some stigma around that they're going to look bad. You know, what are people going to think? I would just encourage anyone who is maybe on the fence about it to just order a sample, you know, see what you think in person. Um, if you end up ordering with us, the sample fee does, uh, you know, some of it comes out of your order fee. Um, we really feel that once you see them in person, um, you'll feel that it really is an adequate substitute for fresh flowers and for anyone on the fence, ordering a sample is a, a great way to start. Yeah, I totally agree. Our main goal with this is that we really feel that everyone should have options. So fresh flowers are for some people and a lot of people will still go with that. Uh, solo wood flowers, like you said, um, artificial flowers, some even non-floral options. We just want couples to know that there are alternatives out there, whether or not they go with them. This is something that is available and is a great option for a lot of people. Yes. Very good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We will, as always, include the link on, um, on our website in the show notes, silkstemcollective.com. 
is the website and the Instagram handle. And on Instagram, I'm, I could look now, but do you, you have photos of the product? Also, do people send you their wedding photos? Yes. They do. Uh, usually our story also has a couple recent ones that either other um, photographers or couples have posted uh, tagging us. We do have some tag photos. But yeah, our Instagram is a great way to see how um, other couples have incorporated our products into, into their weddings. People are so creative. It's fun to see that we only have eight collections, but I feel like we have just seen like an infinite number of ways that people can style them in different ways or pair them with different things. And it's been really fun to see. Yeah. That is awesome. You mentioned when we talked on the phone, Megan, that there was a couple, two brides where they both, it was your collection all around, but they both chose their own, what they liked on the website, right? They bought different bouquets or was it? Yeah. Anyways, I thought that was really cool too, because it is an expression. For sure. And they had um, a mix, mixed bridal party of different genders on both sides. So that was a really cool way to distinguish who was on which side and whose family members were who was. Right from the what they were holding yep. in their collection, like coordinating, but different enough as that you could see. That's very cool. Well, good. I'm really glad that you were both able to join me. So thank you for telling me about your company and we'll just keep spreading the word. And if any of you listening, you know, end up going with Silk Stem Collective, please send us pictures and tag everyone involved so we can see each other out there that way. Yeah. Thanks so much for having us. The Big Wedding Planning Podcast is hosted and produced by me, Christy Matthews, and Michelle Martinez. It is edited by Veronica Gruba. Music by Steph Altman of Mophonics. If you like the Big Wedding Planning Podcast, please subscribe. We are available for free on pretty much all podcast player apps. Help us get the word out by rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at the Big Wedding Planning Podcast and be sure to use the hashtag plan that wedding when posting. Become part of our Facebook group. Join us and our amazing members. Just search the Big Wedding Planning Podcast community on Facebook. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at the Big Wedding Planning Podcast at gmail.com or you can call and leave us a voicemail at 415 723 1625 and you might hear your voice on a future episode. That is it. Happy planning, everybody. Christy, love you, love your show. Bye.